Hi everybody, today I want to show you how I paint a portrait when there are multiple color lights on the subject. So here is a portrait and you can see there are at least three different lights. And here's my palette I'll be using. It's pretty basic. I find that for those strong blues and greens I really needed phthalo. And something I also did is I pre-mixed some white into some phthalo. If you've ever used phthalo blue, it is so strong and it can easily overpower a mixture. So I find pre-mixing it with some white can kind of cut that down and uh, help it be more manageable. I'm starting with more of a full color block in. If you've ever read Richard Schmidt's book, A La Prima, he talks about how there are multiple ways you can start a painting and it's valuable to practice multiple ways. That way, uh, maybe a subject will call for a different way to start. Like here, I could have drawn it out more accurately from the beginning, or I could have done a single tone and then build the colors on top of that later. I just wanted to kind of get a start with the colors I wanted to show up in the painting. And so that's why I chose to go with more of a full color block in. I did some basic measuring to get the general shape of the head. And you'll see even throughout the painting after I've blocked it in, I'm still doing corrections and making adjustments. That's very important to not be afraid to make adjustments even when you're a little further along in your painting. I'm taking a little more time now to refine the shapes and try to get the drawing accurate. You'll see a little later on, I actually widen the face. It is a little bit narrow at this point. Watching myself paint is uh, kind of nerve wracking sometimes. It's like when you're watching one of your favorite movies or TV shows and you really wish that the hero would have done something different this time, but they always do the same mistake. So watching myself paint is kind of cringeworthy looking at these mistakes and uh, you know, even at the end it's not perfect but I try to keep making it better throughout the entire process. Speaking of mistakes, I started her left eyebrow a little too high there. You can see it makes her look like she's curious and thankfully I caught that and later on I'll fix that. I'm trying to block in more accurate colors and values. I'm also starting with pretty strong color. Uh, some paintings I'll do it one way or the other, but sometimes it, it's good to start with more neutral colors and then just gradually build those strong colors. But with oil paint, if you need strong color, it may be better to start with strong color or color that's a little stronger than you think you'll need. Because as you continue to mix and blend, those colors tend to neutralize themselves and get a little bit duller. So that's why I wanted to start with stronger color in this block in here.
If you watched my last video on priming your own panels, this is actually one of those panels that I primed from that video. I used a bottom coat of Liquitex Basics Acrylic Gesso, and then once that dried, I sanded it smooth, and then I put on a coat of Michael Harding's non-absorbent acrylic primer on top. I think that Michael Harding's is less absorbent. It does seem that the colors sink in a little bit still, but it's not as absorbent as the Liquitex. I was pretty happy with how the paint went on. The face was a little narrow here, and so I am deciding to widen it. Once again, always double checking measurements and trying to go for accuracy. And I think I already said, even by the end of this painting, it's not perfect. But I'm trying to make it more accurate as I go. For the first initial block end stage of this painting, I sped it up even more. So this is still high speed time lapse, but it's a little bit slower than that very beginning section. Just so you can see some of the fine tuning. And really that's where I spent most of my time. I'd say I probably spent 45 minutes to an hour drawing and blocking it in. And then probably another four hours or so refining it. It's like they say, trifles make for perfection, and perfection is no trifle. I probably quoted that before, but um, yeah, that's really most of the painting process, is just refining things. Yeah, that eyebrow is still too high. Pretty soon here I'll wipe it out and start it over. One of the benefits of painting a portrait under multiple lights like this is it forces you to really pay attention to what colors you're mixing. Sometimes if I paint a portrait under natural light, I'll have my favorite mixes, my recipes, and I kind of rely on that. Most of my standard portrait colors are mixed with yellow ochre, cadmium red, and ultramarine blue, and then white, and I just kind of get into a rut. So here it, it definitely is a good challenge and a great exercise to focus on those colors. There you can see I'm wiping out that eyebrow thankfully and moving it back down where it needs to be. There are a few areas where some of the more natural skin tones show through. Areas like her chin or that little mid-tone to the right of her nose. So sometimes if the colored light is not actually hitting a plane on the face, you may see some of those natural colors show through. 
but for the most part this one is just saturated with so much neon light that there's not much regular colors or usual colors we would see in a portrait. I'm starting to block in the shadows and get those more accurate as far as their value. That adds a lot of solidity and form and structure to the head. If you go back and look at the initial blocking, you'll see from here to there, the initial blocking is a lot weaker looking. That's one of the things that I, I see in a lot of people that start with portrait painting is they're afraid to get those shadows dark enough. Under natural lighting, they just feel that those colors don't look right or they don't belong in the face. But here, where we have more unnatural and vibrant lighting, you don't really think about what would be natural. You just think about what the, the actual value of those colors should be. So that's a, a benefit of doing a study like this is it kind of eliminates those standard colors you think of and you can just focus on those values. I try to tell my students as often as I can that the most important elements of color are value and temperature. And that's not original with me. I got that from other artists and art teachers. But as long as you get those values correct, the right light or dark value that they need to be, and as long as the temperatures are correct, so here on the left, there's those warm temperatures with the orange light. And then on the right, there's the cooler temperatures with the blue light. So as long as you get those values and temperatures correct, if your color is not exactly what you're seeing, then it still will read, it will still look fine. Some artists place a higher value on getting the perfect exact color mixtures. Uh, but for me, as long as the drawing values, edges, and temperatures are correct, the color can have a little bit of leeway. And you'll see that with illustrators. Illustrators, I think, especially will push colors for telling their stories and setting a mood. The reason I wanted to do a portrait under multiple colored lights is because I actually have a number of students who are doing portraits like this. So hopefully it's a help to them or anybody who's watching or uh, maybe just interesting if nothing else. You'll see as I put the highlights in here, I go back multiple times, wipe it out, re redo it, try to get it just right. And like I said, a lot of this process is just making corrections and adjustments. I always have to remind myself of John Singer Sargent when I do this, because I feel guilty if I have to keep going back and fixing things. But Sargent would repaint things numerous times until he was happy with it. I think that's the goal. I probably said this before in other videos as well, but sometimes we get caught up into that speed painting mentality. And for some instances, it is important if we're doing plein air painting or a timed painting event, you need to move quickly. But ultimately, when you're working on your own projects, working for yourself, it doesn't really matter how quick you do it. The most important thing is that it looks good at the end. When you post things on Instagram or Facebook, if your paintings don't look good, but they went really quickly and you just post them and say, hey, this went super quick, but it, it was not the best painting, that doesn't matter. I would much rather see somebody's painting that they spent a longer time on and it turned out better and something they were more happy with. All that just to say once again, don't feel bad if you have to correct something or go back and adjust things in your paintings. I'm 
I'm having to break out a lot of the small brushes for these little details. This is a six inch by eight inch panel. So not too big. I kind of like working smaller sizes like this, especially for demos and uh, videos like this. They go quicker than you doing a much larger painting. But they do require those smaller brushes for any tighter details. I found it interesting that these lights on the cheek I'm working on right now actually had a bit of a pinkish color to them. That may be due to the, the glossiness or sheen of the skin, or maybe a combination of lights mixing on the face. Another thing that working on a portrait under multiple colored light sources will help you with is thinking through the planes of the face. Depending on what direction a plane of the face is facing, that will determine the color that that plane is. So you can see the right side of the nose, that's a plane, and that is facing towards the, the blue light, so that's bluer. And the left side of the nose, as we're looking at it, is facing the orange light, so that will be more orange. I mostly work on the face, the neck, and the hair in this demo. There is more information I could have done in her shirt, but this is mostly just focusing on the face. I wanted to go over that for you. Maybe I'll do a shirt painting demo later on.
It's interesting that even the highlights in the hair take on the color of the light. And that's something it's good to pay attention to. One of my instructors, Brian Jekyll, always talks about how people with very dark hair, when they're under lights, even under sunlight, sometimes you'll see bluish or purple highlights in the hair. This is forced more because of those artificial lights. But even under natural light, look for color in the highlights of the hair and other areas as well. Even the highlights in her eyes, I had colors in those. They're not just pure white. And that's going to add to the colorful sense of your painting. The color of light tends to mix with the color of whatever objects it's hitting a little bit. So here that greenish light is a little bit darker and a little more neutral on the hair than it is on her forehead. So think about those things as well. How are the light colors mixing with the actual colors of the object? I'm trying to paint the hair as if I am brushing it in the direction that it's flowing. Just a couple adjustments here on the nose and that'll pretty much wrap this study up. Once again, there are some things here I'm seeing now that I could change, but mostly I wanted to focus on painting that portrait under those multiple color light sources. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this and have a great day. I'll see you next time.